The first six issues of Donny Cates, Nick Klein, and Matt Wilson's relaunched Thor are now out, and the final issue is the strongest of the bunch, salvaging a meandering and disappointing back half with enormous Marvel cosmic implications. Today I'll answer, what does the Devourer Herald mean for Galactus in the Marvel Universe? What insanely exciting Marvel cosmic tease is revealed in Thor number six? And where does the first volume of Donny Cates' Thor fit into his Marvel Universe works? You're listening to The Cates of Hell number four. I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. If you like the CBH YouTube channel or podcast, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. You can find all sorts of reading orders for Thor and Donny Cates' Marvel Universe on Comic Book Herald. Spoilers for discussed comics will follow. Like a lot of comic fans, I was very excited for the Cates, Klein, Wilson era of Thor, hot on the heels of Jason Aaron and company's incredible seven-year run in the world of Asgard. I even launched The Cates of Hell, a series where I plan to dig deeper into the evolving Marvel Universe of writer Donny Cates. But a strange thing happened. Both Thor and the post-absolute carnage Cates written Venom took really notable dips in excitement, at best reverting to the Marvel Mendoza line. For a non-baseball comics replacement, I've decided to christen this the Lobda line. Fortunately, Thor number 6 brought the thunder, renewing my excitement for the series. The recent Venom Beyond arc, Venom, has done the same on that front as well. I'm really engaged with the cosmic elements unveiled throughout this arc, even if I still think the arc as a whole played things a little too safe for a little too long. Of course, the pandemic you know, release schedule also definitely impacted this feeling. Since Thor number 1 came out in January 2020, which is the chronal equivalent of 616,000 years ago, here's a quick recap. Following Aaron's run on Thor, the years-long Odin son is once again worthy of Mjolnir, and now the king of Asgard. Galactus shows up after what looks like a brutal 12 rounds in the ring, and before Thor can say Black Winter who, the Big G is imbuing King Thor with the power cosmic, making him his new Galactus, and going on a planet hunt to store up enough power to defeat this universe-ending threat of the Black Winter. I've covered this previously, but I found the Black Winter reminiscent of Hickman's Avengers threats like the Builders, except, well, not as interesting or as built up. The Black Winter looks like Thor threatens the entire multiverse, that's a real big threat for someone we know nothing about, and even by the end of this arc is a pretty hollow creation only made interesting by connecting to pre-existing Marvel properties. Thor number 6 escalates the confrontation with the Black Winter as the mysterious entity tries to reclaim Galactus as his herald. Making Galactus someone else's herald, in this case the Black Winter's, uh, you know, from the original universe he escaped from before making it to Earth 616, feels tired and repetitive. If you can't beat Franklin Richards saying, to me, my Galactus, you probably shouldn't repeat the beat. Either way, this is the showdown the arc has been building towards, and it's well worth it. Matt Wilson's colors illustrate a Galactus literally glowing with power, and that is absolutely phenomenal looking. Now, to really dig into the implications of King Thor's actions here, we kind of have to completely ignore the pretty crazy power fluctuations that allow his assault on Galen to take place. We go from Galactus raging a super-powered planet and becoming uber-powerful, to Thor stealing that power like the beast he stole your honey, and destroying Galactus in two combo moves. I'm actually fine with the speed with which it happens, but if you want to argue the semantics of whether Thor should be that powerful, I will hear you out in the comments, because I don't know myself. Either way, rather than let the Black Winter claim Galactus back as his herald, Thor murderizes his big ass and turns him into a cosmic bomb. Nick Klein has absolutely knocked it out of the park, out of the Starways, with his wounded Galactus shots. It's gorgeous destruction every time he gets to do it. But Galactus' explosion seemingly ends him, and turns the Black Winter into a literal single black snowflake that Thor can then crush in his hand. So by the end of this battle, you know, Thor has, has absolutely maxed out his power set, and he has assassinated Galactus and seemingly ended the threat of the Black Winter. Of course, this being comics, there's more to it than that. Thor sentences Galactus to death for his crime devouring planets in a really nice moment where he gets to list off all these planets that Galactus has devoured over the years, and again, he turns him into a bomb to destroy the Black Winter. Cates does write, uh, to his credit, across all books, he writes some really, really excellent kind of powerful narrative captions, and this is a real chance for him to shine. The full might of the immeasurable power cosmic, the bleeding life force of a universal constant, the energy of a hundred thousand devoured worlds. Now, this is all pretty interesting to me because in acknowledging the destruction of this universal constant and unleashing this power, Cates is casually asking the question, should Galactus be allowed to exist? What happens if he dies in the Marvel Universe? The question of murdering Galactus is basically as old as the World Devourer. A particularly interesting example comes in Fantastic Four 261-262 by John Byrne, otherwise known as the Trial of Reed Richards. Reed is charged by a cosmic council with saving the life of Galactus, which he did, and argues that Galactus is beyond good and evil. Appropriately for this conversation, Odin shows up as a witness and agrees with Reed saying Galactus is a natural force in the universe, you know, like a supernova, and that he serves to test societies. 
Odin then absolves Reed of all blame and somehow ends a trial as a witness. <laughs> he just straight up ends it. This idea that Galactus is a necessary force has been reiterated throughout Marvel for a very long time. You know, it's not just Reed Richards and, and Odin who have said this over time. This is an argument that gets made time and time again. Why do we allow Galactus to exist? Well, he's a part of the cosmic balance is usually where we settle. Thor's actions are way less calculated, certainly less philosophical, more vengeful murder, and I suppose in his own way an unexpected resolution to defeat the encroaching Black Winter. That's a hole, though, in the cosmic fabric that, that exists and is that leaves a really big, big hole for other entities to fill. Thor murders Galactus. Has Galactus died before? Well, Marvel pretty clearly hasn't quite known what to do with Galactus for a number of years. I think Al Ewing had the best idea, turning Galactus into the Lifebringer way back in Ultimates, which came uh, in the aftermath of 2015 Secret Wars. But that even was undone way too quickly in the Infinity Wars event uh, for, for really minimal, minimal payoff. So I, I liked the idea of Lifebringer Galactus, but again, I, I actually don't take a lot of issue with um, Thor, you know, assassinating Galactus here because Marvel hasn't had a real good purpose for him if you... You, if you, you know, acknowledge Lifebringer since, like, Annihilation, you know, the, the kind of the, the peak Marvel Cosmic era of the late 2000s was the last time he was super interesting to me. You know, it's interesting, too, to consider, like, the Marvel Universe without Galactus. What does that look like? We know, for example, in the Jonathan Hickman written House of X and Powers of Ten, one of the only cosmic entities that the Phalanx are afraid of, there are two that are listed in, in one of the data pages, it's, it's the Phoenix and Galactus. So the Phalanx, you know, as this kind of, you know, immense threat that is emerging in the pages of the X-Men Universe and Powers of Ten, they are afraid of Galactus, the world eater, but now you take him off the board, who are they afraid of, right? Does that now create a vacuum for them to, uh, to grab more power than they otherwise would have that's a vacuum of power and as we all hear you know it nature abhors a vacuum so there's this idea now in the marvel cosmic scene in the marvel universe like galactus is not just a thor threat right in the same way that the coming of galactus way back in fantastic four number 48 to 50 by stanley and jack kirby like galactus wasn't just a fantastic four threat you know he eats the world right he devours all around him he is a cosmic entity this impacts kind of everyone we care about in the Marvel Universe, and I'm really interested to see what that hole might get filled with. Speaking of, the coolest revelation in this issue, and huge props to Kate's and company here for delivering this image now rather than making, you know, milking the suspense for future issues, is the vision of the coming end that the Black Winter grants Thor. He's given this vision of Thanos laying waste to the heroes in the Marvel Universe. He's wielding Mjolnir imbued with the Infinity Gems, which is a freaking fun as hell idea, and what I'm guessing is a Necro Infinity Gauntlet. Wildest of all, there appears to be an army of Marvel zombies standing behind him. Now, there's two strong possibilities here. One, Thanos accessed Marvel Marvel Zombies realm and brings them to Earth 616 to aid his conquest. And Cates is playing with the Ultimate Universe in the pages of Venom, including a new future all symbiote reality in the Venom Beyond arc that's going on right now. So this actually seems very much up his alley, I think, as a creator to pull from the Marvel Zombies realm. That would not surprise me in the slightest. Um, you know, it's possible Thanos could. He has a Mjolnir <laughs> Infinity, you know, stone laid in a hammer here. Could he have just turned them into zombies? Sure. But I, I would actually suspect it's going to be more direct tied to the Marvel Zombies realm. Plus, you know, the second idea is that Thanos, he could be pulling the kind of the zombies from beyond the shield in 2015 Secret Wars Battle World. I think this is a lot less likely, but he does actually get sent there in that event and would have, had, you know, interacted with the zombies for a time. So I don't necessarily expect this to call back to Battle World, but that was the other possibility that kind of popped in my head here about the role Thanos might play. Jason Aaron did so much work across the future of Thor in his run that it's unclear how neatly Kate's vision lines up, or whether the two even really need to, you know, at the end of the day, like possible futures are a time-tested storytelling trick in Marvel Comics. Same goes for Kate's Thanos Wins future, where we know Galactus and the Cosmic Ghost Rider, for example, um, you know, they're warring against Thanos for a time. So any way you slice it, unsurprisingly, this means this is far from the last we'll see of Galactus. Like, we see King Thor in the distant future in Jason Aaron's run fighting a Galactus that has returned to Earth. And then, as I mentioned, in Thanos Wins, which is another, you know, really, I think, increasingly essential read now from Case, which is very good, uh, we see Galactus, again, fighting Thanos as one of the last forces in the universe to fight him. I mean, one thing to consider here, talking about the vacuum of power that Thor has created, if if the intent is actually to say, no, Thor really took Galactus off the table, maybe now we're looking at a situation where he has changed these futures, right? We had old King Thor fighting Galactus, we had Galactus fighting Thanos, and Thanos wins. Maybe now he's changed these futures to the point where that can't happen. And that's interesting to consider as well. Again, this being Marvel Comics, I would expect it's certainly not the last we'll see him. 
I do kind of think the best thing Cates could do is build towards a showdown with Thanos rather than centering everything around Null, who has been the big villain in the pages of his run on Venom. You know, or, or ideally, I think actually we have Null operate as one of Thanos' lieutenants. There's definite tiring around Null you can kind of feel in the comics community, which is kind of inevitable when you spend so many comics on build-up without really getting to the confrontation. You know, we've had glimpses in the earliest Venom story arc or Silver Surfer Black, um, but again, like there's gonna be, it's going to happen in King of Black coming up or King in Black coming up in December, but it's been kind of slow. So I think all building back to Thanos, a villain we already care a lot more about, is a really, really interesting idea. So as far as where this fits in the Kate's Marvel Universe, it's definitely lower tier for me. Probably better than Death of the Inhumans, but not a ton else that he's done. You know, I definitely like Thanos wins more. I like his run on Doctor Strange more. Um, I, I probably like this Thor about equivalent of his run on Guardians, I would say. It's got that level of, like, interesting cosmic ideas, um, but imperfect execution. I think Nick Klein and Matt Wilson definitely helped this story achieve far greater heights than it was meant for, similar to how Dowderman and Wilson were able to elevate some of the more middling chapters of Jason Aaron's Thor. You know, just when the Art is so incredible, it really makes the run feel, I think, even more essential. This final issue was definitely an eye-opener, though, right? Thor number six, I think it helps this series a ton. And as this series inevitably spirals towards King and Black in December, I mean, I think there's, I don't know that the crossovers have been listed yet. I put up a Road to King and Black guide on Comic Book Herald, which you can check out. But again, like, Thor's going to cross over. There's no way Kate's writing Venom and Thor that there aren't some significant Thor crossover issues in there. I think it'll be interesting to see, given that, if Kate's and team can maintain this degree of energy and momentum that they've started building up again. I really, really hope they can. Um, and I'm, I'm confident and I'm interested. So I want to hear what you all think, definitely. Leave your thoughts in the comments about what this means for the Marvel U, about whether you dug Thor 1 through 6, um, and just kind of what you think about, you know, the impact of Galactus and, and the big Thanos tease as well, like ideas, theories around that. I didn't go nearly as deep. I mean, I mean the entire video could have just been digging into that Thanos leading an army of Marvel zombies page, right? There, there's a lot you could do with that. So let me know what you all think. Um, I've got some reading up here. These are the issues that I focused in most intently on if you want to do uh, some comics reading following watching this video. So check those out. You can screenshot this or again, like I think I keep saying I'll put them in the show notes and then probably forgetting. Um, so maybe just pause this <laughs> if you want to check out the comics that are the most important. Otherwise, thanks everybody over at patreon.com slash comic book herald for supporting comic book herald initiatives and content. It is greatly appreciated. Uh, in particular, I like to shout out every YouTube video, my mysterious benefactors. These are the individuals who are supporting the site at $10 a month. And one of the perks you get at that level is you get your name listed and read off on the YouTube video. So thanks, Jeff Zacharias, Ron Paul Kirkley, Jesse W., Robert Mickelson, Professor Pride, Steve Brennan, Cole Weathers, Martin Lopez, Chris Isidro, and Darren Clark. I'm Dave. You can find my stuff at comicbookherald.com, at comicbookherald, pretty much anywhere online. Look for the best comics ever and my Marvelous Year podcast for more. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, enjoy the comics.